Do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many generations. But after observation and analysis, when you find that anything agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and all, then accept it and live up to it. Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha Buddhism is a religion and philosophy that originated in ancient India and has since spread across the modern world. Buddhism is based on the teachings of the Buddha, or Siddhartha Gautama. The Buddha lived in ancient India in the 5th century BCE. He was a prince, born into a wealthy and privileged family in the Shakya clan in present-day Nepal. However, he became deeply troubled by the suffering he saw around him. He made a vow to try to find a solution to this problem of suffering. So, Prince Gautama left his family and all his worldly possessions behind and began a search to overcome suffering and to find the source of true and lasting happiness. After years of intense contemplation and study, including many years of severe privation, the Buddha attained enlightenment, or Nirvana. He found what he was looking for the source of true and lasting happiness. From this moment on, the Buddha devoted himself to sharing his insights with others. The Buddha's teachings, known as the Dharma, are centered on the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. The Four Noble Truths are 1. Life is suffering 2. The cause of suffering is desire and ignorance. 3. Suffering can be ended. 4. The way to end suffering is to follow the Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is a set of ethical and spiritual practices. They are 1. Right Understanding 2. Right Intention 3. Right Speech 4. Right Action 5. Right Livelihood 6. Right Effort 7. Right Mindfulness 8. Right Concentration The Buddha offered the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path as a framework to understand the nature of suffering and how to overcome it. The ultimate goal of Buddhism is to understand the Four Noble Truths and on the basis of that understanding practice the Eightfold Path and thereby achieve enlightenment or Nirvana. What is Nirvana? But what does it mean to achieve Nirvana? Nirvana in Buddhism refers to the highest state of enlightenment that can be achieved by an individual. It is a state of perfect peace and understanding in which the individual is free from suffering and the cycle of death and rebirth. However, it is best understood as an undoing rather than an achievement of any kind. The word Nirvana is a Sanskrit term that means to extinguish or to blow out, as in to extinguish a flame. According to tradition, the Buddha's first words after he attained enlightenment were, Through many births in samsara, I have wandered in vain, seeking the builder of this house. Repeated birth is indeed suffering. O house builder, you are seen. You shall not build this house again. For your rafters are broken and your ridge pole shattered. My mind has reached the unconditioned. Achieved is the end of craving. 
These words are often referred to as the first turning of the wheel of Dharma, and they are considered to be the Buddha's first teachings. The Buddha expresses the realization that he has attained Nirvana, or enlightenment, and has seen the true nature of reality. The house builder in this passage is a metaphor for the ego, which the Buddha has now realized is an illusion. It has been blown out as in the definition of Nirvana. After the Buddha's death, his teachings were transmitted orally and eventually written down in the form of scriptures known as the Pali Canon. From the early centuries CE, Buddhism spread throughout India and into other parts of Asia, including Southeast Asia, Central Asia and East Asia. As Buddhism spread, it developed and evolved in different ways, giving rise to three main schools – Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana. Theravada Buddhism is the oldest and most traditional school of Buddhism. It is focused on the teachings of the Buddha and the attainment of enlightenment through personal effort and self-cultivation. Theravada Buddhism emphasizes individual spiritual progress in the attainment of individual enlightenment or nirvana. It is practiced predominantly in Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar or Burma, Thailand, Vietnam. However, it does have a presence in these countries as well, though not as the dominant form of religion as in the Southeast Asian countries. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka. And of course, Theravada Buddhism has now spread to many Western countries, particularly in the form of Vipassana meditation, or insight meditation, which originated from Myanmar, Burma, in the 1950s. In this video, we will examine in more detail Theravada Buddhism. But first, a brief mention of the other two schools of Buddhism, which will be examined in detail in subsequent videos. Mahayana Buddhism, also known as the Great Vehicle, is a more expansive and inclusive form of Buddhism that developed in India and later spread to China, Korea, Japan and other parts of East Asia. Mahayana Buddhism emphasizes the idea of the Bodhisattva, or enlightened being, who helps others achieve enlightenment. It also includes the concept of emptiness, or the idea that all things are lacking in inherent existence. Vajrayana Buddhism, also known as the Diamond Vehicle, or Thunderbolt Vehicle, is a more esoteric and ritualistic form of Buddhism that originated in India and was later transmitted to Tibet, Nepal and other parts of the Himalayas. Vajrayana Buddhism includes complex rituals and practices such as the use of mantras and mudras and emphasizes the attainment of enlightenment in a single lifetime through the use of advanced spiritual techniques. These three schools of Buddhism share many core beliefs and practices, but they differ in their emphasis and approach to the spiritual path. They also differ in their historical origins and many of their teachings. We will examine these beginning with the Theravada Buddhism. Theravada means school of the elders. It is the most conservative of all the schools of Buddhism and is considered to be the classical form of Buddhism. Theravada is also the oldest existing school of Buddhism and its followers are known as Theravadins. As an analogy to Christianity, Theravada Buddhism would be to other forms of Buddhism as Catholicism is to other forms of Christianity. Theravadins strictly follow the teachings of Gautama Buddha as recorded in the Pali Canon. The Pali Canon is the most complete collection of Buddhist scriptures in the classical Indian language of Pali. It is the primary scripture of Theravada Buddhism and is also known as the Tipitaka, which means three baskets in Pali. The Tipitaka is so named because it is divided into three main sections or baskets, Pitaka. Vinaya Pitaka, the rules of the monastic community, 
Sutapitaka, the discourses given by the Buddha and his close disciples. Abhidhamma Pitaka, the technical analysis of Buddhist doctrine and philosophy. The Pali Canon is considered by Theravadins as the complete and only true source for the practice of Buddhism. We will see in subsequent videos that other schools of Buddhism, such as Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhism, have additional scripture which is not recognized by Theravadins. This is because, in contrast to Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhism, Theravada is much more conservative in matters of doctrine and monastic discipline. Theravada Buddhism first became established in Sri Lanka before it moved to Southeast Asia. The Sri Lankan king, Devanampiya Tissa, invited Buddhist monks from India to the island of Sri Lanka in the 3rd century. Theravada Buddhism has since remained the dominant form of Buddhism in Sri Lanka and is to this day an important part of its culture and identity. Also in the 3rd century, Sri Lanka began to introduce Theravada Buddhism into Southeast Asia. Buddhist missionaries from Sri Lanka spread Theravada Buddhism to Thailand, Cambodia and Laos. Theravada Buddhism became very influential in Thailand, where it is still the dominant form of Buddhism today. In Cambodia and Laos, Theravada Buddhism, though prominent, existed with other religions, particularly animistic religions. In recent times, Theravada Buddhism has undergone several developments, including the spread of the Vipassana movement. Vipassana meditation is a form of Buddhist meditation that comes directly from the Theravada tradition. It has become increasingly popular in the West in the last two decades. Many people have completed the 10-day Vipassana meditation retreats, which are offered free of charge at Vipassana meditation centers in many countries. Among well-known people who have reported much benefit from Vipassana meditation are Yuval Noah Harari, Dan Harris, Oprah Winfrey, Jerry Senfield, Jeff Bridges, Paul McCartney. This form of Theravada Buddhism meditation has obviously become very popular in the West. But how did it develop and how did it arrive in the West? And what is the actual technique of Vipassana meditation? Vipassana is a branch of modern Theravada Buddhism. It emphasizes the practice of bare insight, or Sukha Vipassana, to attain spiritual enlightenment, or Nirvana. Sukha Vipassana is the practice of cultivating mindfulness and self-awareness through the direct observation of the present moment, without interpretation or judgment. The goal of the practice is to gain insight into the true nature of reality and to develop a deep understanding of the three marks of existence – impermanence, suffering, non-self. Practitioners aim to see things as they really are and to develop a sense of inner peace and well-being. Sukha Vipassana is often contrasted with Samantha meditation which involves the cultivation of concentration and mental stillness. Samatha meditation is often a practice offered prior to taking up Vipassana meditation. Samatha meditation is focusing and refocusing on the inward and outward breaths while turning away from thought. Once a stability and stillness has been reached in Samatha meditation, then one may introduce Vipassana meditation. Vipassana meditation is the non-judgmental watching of all that arises internally and externally in the present moment. In the Theravada Buddhist tradition, it is understood that the combination of Samatha and Vipassana meditation practices are the fastest and most complete way to attain enlightenment. Vipassana meditation, as it is now taught and has become popular in the West, originated in Burma in the 19th century and quickly spread during the 20th century through the teachings of Mahasi Sayadaw. Vipassana meditation spread globally through the efforts of the Burmese-born Indian lay meditator teacher S. N. Goenka. S. N. Goenka taught that Vipassana techniques are non-sectarian in character and have universal application. 
Goenka asserted that one need not convert to Buddhism to practice Vipassana meditation. Vipassana meditation centers, teaching the Vipassana popularized by S.N. Goenka, were found in Nepal, India, parts of Asia, North and South America, Europe, Australia, Middle East and Africa. S.N. Goenka's form of Vipassana practice focuses on the deep interconnection between mind and body, which can be experienced directly by disciplined attention to the physical sensations of the body. Goenka's Vipassana practice is taught in 10-day retreats, which are paid for by donation only. The first three days are given to the practice of samatha, or concentration on the breath. The next seven days are given to the practice of Vipassana in the form of the body sweep or moving attention through the body while paying attention to the various sensations that arise without reacting to them. Over the last two decades, Vipassana meditation, coming out of the Theravada Buddhist tradition, has become increasingly popular in the United States. Insight meditation centers, which teach Vipassana meditation, are located in Inside Meditation Society, IMS in Barr, Massachusetts, Spirit Rock Meditation Center in Woodcare, California, the Vipassana Meta Foundation in Halewa, Hawaii, the Insight Meditation Community of Washington, D.C. in Tacoma Park, Maryland, the Asheville Insight Meditation Community in Asheville, North Carolina. What is now often called the American Vipassana movement includes many contemporary and influential American Buddhist teachers, such as Joseph Goldstein, Tara Brock, Gil Fonsdahl, Sharon Salzberg, Ruth Dennison, Shinsen Young, Jack Cornfield. Many of these American Buddhist teachers combine the Burmese meditation approach which stresses Vipassana with a Thai meditation approach, which emphasizes, at least at the beginning of practice, Samantha. If you're interested in starting a practice of Vipassana meditation, there are a few steps you can follow to get started. Find a quiet and comfortable place to sit or lie down. You can use a chair, cushion or yoga mat as long as you feel comfortable and able to maintain a good posture. Close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. You can focus on the sensation of the breath as it moves in and out of your body. Or you can simply observe your breath without trying to control it in any way. As you focus on your breath, you may find that your mind becomes restless or that you become distracted by various thoughts and emotions. When this happens, gently redirect your attention back to your breath without judgment or frustration. Continue to focus on your breath for five to 10 minutes or for as long as you feel comfortable. You can gradually increase the length of your meditation sessions as you become more comfortable with the practice. As you meditate, try to maintain a sense of curiosity and openness and be willing to let go of any judgments or expectations you may have. Remember that meditation is a practice and it is normal to experience challenges and setbacks as you develop your practice. In part two of this video series, we will look at Mahayana Buddhism in more detail. And in part three, we will examine Vajrayana Buddhism. Here are some areas in which Theravada has differences with both Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhisms. Theravada Buddhism emphasizes the practice of insight meditation and the cultivation of mindfulness, as well as the study of the Pali Canon, which is the oldest and most comprehensive record of the Buddha's teachings. Mahayana Buddhism, on the other hand, emphasizes the cultivation of compassion and the attainment of enlightenment for the benefit of all beings and includes a wide range of scriptures and teachings. Vajrayana Buddhism, also known as Tibetan Buddhism, includes a variety of practices such as Tantra and Deity Yoga, 
that are not found in either Theravada or Mahayana Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism is considered to be the oldest and most traditional form of Buddhism and is thought to be closest to the original teachings of the Buddha. Mahayana Buddhism emerged in India around the 1st century CE. Vajrayana Buddhism developed in Tibet in the 7th to 9th centuries CE. Geography Theravada Buddhism is predominantly found in Southeast Asia, Sri Lanka and parts of South Asia. Mahayana Buddhism is more widespread, with significant communities in East Asia, the Himalayan region and the West. Vajrayana Buddhism is primarily practiced in Tibet, Nepal and Bhutan, as well as in parts of India, China and Mongolia. Theravada Buddhism places a strong emphasis on monasticism, with many monks and nuns living in monasteries and following a strict code of conduct. Mahayana Buddhism also has a monastic tradition, but it is less central to the practice of the tradition, and many lay practitioners also play a significant role. Vajrayana Buddhism includes both monastic and lay practitioners, and the role of monasticism varies depending on the specific tradition. Theravada Buddhism The laity is expected to support the monastic community and to practice generosity, morality and meditation as a means to attain spiritual development. Mahayana Buddhism The laity is seen as equally capable of attaining enlightenment and lay practitioners often play a more active role in the spiritual life of the community. Vajrayana Buddhism Lay practitioners may also participate in advanced spiritual practices such as Tantra, but these practices are typically reserved for those who have received the appropriate empowerments and training. Theravada Buddhism The Buddha is revered as a fully enlightened being and a supreme teacher, but he is not considered to be a deity. Mahayana Buddhism The Buddha is often worshipped as a deity, and his teachings and example are seen as a means to enlightenment for all beings. Vajrayana Buddhism The Buddha is also revered as a deity, and his teachings and example are seen as a way to awaken the innate potential for enlightenment that lies within all beings. Theravada Buddhism Enlightenment is seen as the goal of the spiritual path, and it is achieved through the cultivation of wisdom and the elimination of ignorance and craving. Mahayana Buddhism Enlightenment is seen as a state of perfect compassion and wisdom, and it is achieved through the cultivation of the Bodhisattva ideal. Vajrayana Buddhism Enlightenment is seen as the realization of the true nature of reality, and it is achieved through the cultivation of various spiritual practices, such as Tantra and Deity Yoga. <laughs>